Welcome back to the gun dungeon. The wind is ripping today, so I'm gonna try to fit in the scene between the wind. But as you can tell from the thumbnail, we got a pretty interesting video today. We're gonna be using revolvers and checking the cylinder gap pressure. Not really the pressure, but the damage that can be done using these turkey hot dogs to simulate kind of a human finger. And that's about all a turkey hot dog is actually good for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay one of those hot dogs up for each one of these rounds I got right up next to the cylinder gap, about as close as I can get it, and then we'll pull the trigger and see what happens to the turkey dog. Some of the rounds I'm using will start from the problem. I don't have a pressure gauge, but the, the softest shooting to the hardest that I have. 148 grain wad cutter in 38. A 158 grain uh, uh, lead round nose, 38 special. Then we have a 110 grainer. This is a little hotter. That's a hand load, but it is a little hotter. So 110 grain, 38 special. Then we'll move up to 357 Magnum. This is 125 grain critical defense. That is a factory load. 158 grain Federal Hydra Shock, 357 Magnum. And then we'll move over to the 44. And I've got a 240 grain hand load here towards the top end of the line, not over max or anything, but that's using H110. And then I've got these little screamers. This is a 180 grainer with a max load of H110. And that one's pretty hot. I expect to see some damage out of this one. There's that wind. <clears throat> All things being equal, in the 357 38s, you're gonna have the exact same cylinder gap, so you'll be able to compare the two. Move to the 44. This thing does look like it has a fairly tight cylinder gap. That may or may not increase the pressure of the gas that's coming out of there. I don't know, but there is one way to find out. Since this wind's blowing and not being cooperative, let's just go ahead and start shooting and see how it does. Okay, so here's our uh, 148 grain uh, wad cutter. So we'll stick it right up here. Right beside the cylinder gap, as close as I can get it. All right, so that's what you got. That's not a lot of damage, definitely burnt it. And that little crack in there, that's some damage. I don't know what that would translate over into an actual human finger, but I definitely wouldn't want that to be my finger. And that's the lowest pressure 38 that we got. So now I will go ahead and do the 158 grain lead round nose. Let's see how that goes. 158 grain, 38 special lead round nose. I don't think those 44s are gonna leave as much once we get there, because that was a 158 grainer. And that's, there's a burn, but that you can see what those gases did. You saw it yourself, so let's move on. Let's try that 110 grain 38 special, see if it's any more powerful or have any more gas coming out of the cylinder gap. I wouldn't want that to be my finger. All right, so I'm glad I had my glasses on. I felt splatter hit me all in the face from this thing. And you can see that's quite a bit more damage. I'm, I'm feeling like even though a hot dog's a lot softer than a finger, I'm feeling like that right there would do some really, really heavy damage to a finger. I mean, I haven't pulled it apart or anything. That's what you got. And that was with a 110 grain 38 special. So now we're gonna get into the big boys, 357 Magnum time. First up is gonna be that 125 grain critical defense, 357 Magnum. I'm gonna make sure I got my glasses on for this one. So that's what's left. It is gone and it's kind of shredded at the end. I imagine they're all gonna end up like that from this point forward. You can see the hot dog stuck into the gun here. I'm gonna have to clean this thing now. Normally I'm picking chicken up everywhere. Now it's turkey. I must not like feathered animals. All right, so 158 grain Hydra Shock. We'll get that loaded up. Fresh finger here. And we'll see how the last 357 does before we go to 44. So that was the most devastating so far. Just shredded the hot dog. I feel like you're taking major damage at this point. More gunk all over my 686 here. Uh, that one seemed to be a little bit more violent to me. I had to clean hot dog off of the front of the camera because it just splattered it. So 
now we'll see how the 44 does with a single action revolver see if maybe the gap's tighter it looks like it's tighter i'm not going to swear that it is but it looks like it is and we'll do these two hot rods and see how they go first up will be the 240 grain xtp hand load 44 magnum That was violent. The whole front of the camera was covered in turkey gunk. I, pro I mean, I really probably didn't need to go further after the 357s came into play or even the hot 38 specials. But for the sake of entertainment, we're gonna blast it with that hot little 180 grain 44 Magnum. I don't expect there to be much left. I've getting, been getting half a hot dog since we went to 350, but 357, but let's do it anyways. That is a hot little round. You can feel when that one goes off, you can just feel it in your face. Having my hand up there holding this hot dog, I was a little bit nervous to be honest with you, but you can see guys, that cylinder gap pressure ain't no joke. Especially when you start getting into the hot rod rounds like 44 Magnum 357, there ain't nothing left. I, did, I can't even find the other end of that one. It just kind of went everywhere. But yeah, you can see guys, it, it, it really don't take much. So, hey, look. I just found Jail Block Jim's torso. Keeping that, keeping that. <laughs> so I've done my part. It's time for you to do your part. Go down, hit like, and subscribe. Make sure that you hit that notification bell as well. And that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video and you kind of take away from it just how dangerous it is to get your digits up around the cylinder, the front of the cylinder and the forcing cone. Sometimes on those little J-frames, it's kind of hard not to, especially I've got big hands, those guys with big hands out there. Sometimes that thumb is, depending on your grip, what you got to really watch, sometimes that thumb is real close to the front of that cylinder gap and it'd be an easy way to take the tip of that baby right off. So, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, like I said. And until next time, guys, stay tuned.